Uh, one of the major obstacles in treatment of major uh, depressive disorder has to do with our conceptualization of this condition. Uh, namely, uh, when it comes to diagnosis of depression, we are dealing with it as if it was a unitary condition. It is defined by a cluster of symptoms which last for two or more weeks and interfere with person's functioning. On the other hand, if we look at the neurobiological evidence about this condition, we find out that uh, no matter which marker we're interested in, be it neuroimaging studies, be it uh, indicators of autonomic and endocrine and immune function in individuals who have depression, be it uh, cellular and subcellular changes, they all point in the same direction. Namely, depression does not appear to be a single condition. If depression indeed is not a single condition, it is unlikely that we will find a treatment that will have universal efficacy. So maybe a better question would be, what is the right treatment for a given patient? Well, at the beginning of the treatment, uh, given what we have just spoken about, it is hard to be certain uh, which medication will be more effective than any other. But there are some things that we need to pay attention to. Uh, namely, what is the patient's preference? Uh, there has been some very intriguing research suggesting that if patients prefer psychotherapy, they will do much better with psychotherapy. On the other hand, if they prefer to be treated with medication, uh, uh, antidepressant uh, approaches may be more effective. It is not only what patient's preference is, there are some uh, anthropomorphic indicators even that would suggest how the patient will respond to an antidepressant. Uh, this is now a uh, repeated finding. Individuals who have higher body mass index are less likely to respond favorably to antidepressant treatments. Also, it is good to keep in mind that when we're treating patient, uh, it is not only their condition, but the circumstances in their life that may influence the outcome. There were patients who are struggling with bad relationships or patients who have had a history of childhood trauma may not respond to antidepressants uh, as well as the individuals who do not have that kind of history in, in social context. Uh, most likely there is not a best antidepressant for all depressed patients. On the other hand, uh, emerging science would suggest that there are uh, genetic and biochemical markers that may provide us with some information what may be a best antidepressant for a given patient. Uh, there is also some preliminary evidence suggesting that certain symptom domains may also effectively guide our treatment in order to achieve better outcomes. Uh, there are some advancements in, in treatment of uh, major depressive disorder. Uh, some of these advancements have to do with better safety profiles of the medicine. Uh, there have been uh, significant resources dedicated to finding antidepressant treatments uh, that may have less sexual side effects, uh, less weight gain, less metabolic abnormalities associated uh, with their usage. This is very important because uh, adverse reactions associated with medications are a principal reason for why individuals would discontinue their treatment. Uh, in that uh, sense, there are a couple of medicines that uh, are in development now that, uh, in addition to utilizing increase in serotoninergic transmission via blockade of serotonin transporter, also modulate various receptors, including serotonin 1A receptor, serotonin 3, serotonin 7 receptors.